Hi, welcome to Low Bono's YouTube channel. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, here you will find tons of videos that focus on increasing education and awareness and study aids to members of the immigrant community in the United States. So today I wanted to share a news alert from USCIS that can potentially affect some naturalization applicants. The news alert was issued in February of 2020, and it is alerting you to an update to the USCIS policy manual. But first, let me take a step back because you may not have even known that USCIS posts news alerts. Well, they do. So let me show you. So if you have your phone or your PC browser open, what you want to do is point to USCIS.gov slash news slash alerts. And it'll bring up this page, which is pretty much like a standard news alert page that you'll see at any large company or corporation website or government agency website. And it has postings of um, various uh, news alerts from the last days, weeks, months. It can even go back several years. So what we want to do is focus on this particular news alert from February 26th of 2020, which I have highlighted here. So let's go ahead and click on that to see what they are alerting us to. So it will open up this specific page that is letting you know um, that there is an update to the USCIS policy manual and they're alerting you to that fact. And it looks like what they're letting you know is that um, if you're a a potential applicant for naturalization or you are an applicant to naturalization and you've had a break in your um, uh, continuance of lawful permanent residence in the United States, um, this may affect you. Um, and it's just kind of letting you know that um, the rule regarding that particular policy has been updated in the USCIS policy manual. Um, so actually before we continue, let me take another step back and explain the USCIS policy manual because um, you may be wondering, well, what's the USCIS policy manual, which is a very good question. So let's take a look at it by clicking right here, which will open up a um, separate tab to the online version of the USCIS policy manual. And what you want to do is actually reference the online one if you ever need to uh, look up information versus the hard copy version. The online version is very useful because it's just kind of organized in a very um, uh, consistent and easy to understand way. Um, and it's, um, you know, just easier to click through the different parts of the manual versus searching by hand through a hard copy version. But Anyway, so the U.S. policy manual is broken down into different volumes. Um, this specific uh, volume that we're interested in is volume 12, which deals with citizenship and naturalization. But before we dive too much into, into that, just, just have an understanding that there is a USCIS policy manual. Um, it exists. Um, it's helpful not just for you, the applicant, um, but it's also helpful to the USCIS officer who is adjudicating your, your case. Um, one of the uh, reasons it's called a policy manual is because uh, it's actually a, a policy manual technically for the USCIS officer, but uh, you as a, um, a member of the public have access to that policy manual. That's why it's posted online. But the online policy manual um, essentially contains the official policies of USCIS, and it must be followed by all USCIS officers in the performance of their duties. So that's why it's helpful for you to um, have access to that information, because that way you know whether they're kind of playing by the rules when they're adjudicating your case. And you can reference this manual um, if there's ever a question of them potentially not adjudicating your case in the proper fashion. So just be aware that the policy manual exists and it's very, uh, very helpful. So let's go back to uh, what we are um, being updated to. So what we're being updated to is that there's been an update to volume 12 of the policy manual, which deals with citizenship and naturalization. And part D has been updated 
you know, the general naturalization requirements. And specifically, Chapter 3 of Part D has been updated, which um, deals with um, continuance of residence. And as you can see, um, this part of the policy manual, um, it's pretty voluminous. There's a lot of information there. There's useful charts um, regarding the policies. It's broken down into, you know, the, the requirement itself. Um, the um, uh, maintenance of continuance uh, of residence for lawful permanent residence. Um, it explains what can happen if there's been a break in that continuance of residence. And it gives you kind of like um, a chart uh, with useful information, but also gives you examples as well of potential scenarios that are helpful. So this um, page has lots of useful information, just like all the other USCIS policy manual pages. There's a ton of great information there. So the um, purpose of this video is to let you know that, hey, USCIS is letting you know that there's been an update to this page, and the update is regarding um, applicants or potential applicants who may have had a break in their um, continuity of residence requirement. So um, let's take a look at the um, memorandum of the update um, so we can kind of see what they are um, updating specifically. So this is an actual memorandum of the update, again, which was um, alerted to um, USCIS news uh, alert webpage on February 26, 2020. And it kind of explains the purpose, the background, and the policy highlights. So we can just kind of deal with the policy highlights because that's the meat of what this video is about. Um, but just to um, remind you the background on the requirement itself, which you are probably already aware of, but just to remind you if you're not, um, the, the re general requirement is that um, Applicants for naturalization generally must have resided continuously in the United States after his or her lawful permanent resident admission for at least five years prior to the filing of their naturalization application. Um, now, if you're a U.S. citizen spouse applicant, that requirement is only three years. Um, but under the law, uh, an absence from the United States for more than six months but less than one year during that five-year statutory period triggers uh, a presumption of a break in the continuity of such uh, residence. So let's go to the policy highlights to uh, kind of uh, let us know what's, um, what, what they've changed, what they're updating. So it looks like here that um, they're clarifying that um, general rule uh, that states that, um, you know, the, the residency requirement um, that um, if they have been um, absent from the United States during that statutory period for more than six months but less than one year, um, they must overcome the presumption that the continuity of residence has been broken in order to remain eligible for naturalization. Um, so that, that's a pretty important update, right? right there um, so that kind of that's shifting the burden uh, to you um, it's also clarifying that um, an applicant who USCIS determines to have broken the continuity of residence must establish a new period of continuance of residence um, so two important highlights right there um, keep those in the back of the mind of your mind again it may not affect um, uh, most of you or even some of you, but just uh, be aware that there is a requirement of naturalization regarding continuance of residence. And if you have a break in that continuance of residence, that can affect your naturalization. And this policy update um, deals with that break in continuance of residence. So hopefully you found that um, helpful, uh, not just uh, the alert, but also knowing about the um, um, the uh, manual itself, which is found online, and um, the uh, news alert webpage, which again is also found online. So again, thank you for watching this video. Um, 
as a reminder, uh, Low Bono's YouTube channel is not monetized, so I don't allow Google AdSense advertisements to run on my videos. I don't earn Google AdSense revenue for advertisement clicks or impressions. Uh, I believe that information, especially public information, should be free and easily accessible. So please consider subscribing. That's how I know you guys are interested. And also uh, keep in mind that I have other videos posted uh, that will help you in your uh, study of U.S. citizenship, um, civics, and history um, requirements for uh, the exam. So if you're needing to study for that, um, those videos that I've posted should be helpful for that as well. And also for those of you who may need a little more help, uh, especially with the reading, writing, and speaking portions of the exam, uh, please consider my uh, low bono U.S. naturalization preparation course. Um, again, most of you may not need this, but if you're really struggling with English reading, writing, um, and speaking, I've developed a, a course which um, provides online video lessons, it has the official USCIS civics questions, I have practice quizzes, um, I have guidance on the reading test, the speaking test, and the writing test. And again, it's all online and it lets you study in a very smart way that maximizes Maximizes your time and will kind of give you that extra boost in confidence to prepare yourself for the uh, naturalization e exam. So keep that in mind. I'll post a link to that page on um, the bottom part of the um, video as, as well. Again, thank you for uh, watching and again, please subscribe for future news uh, alerts to USCIS policy updates. Thank you.